In this video, we're going to take what we've learned so far about carbocation stability and we're going to apply it to a new type of reaction we haven't seen before. And these are called rearrangement reactions. And they give a lot of students trouble, but there really isn't any big trick to them once you understand the patterns of carbocation stability. So let's just go through that list of carbocation stability just quickly and then we can see how this is going to show be the driving force to help us understand how and why these types of rearrangement reactions occur. So on the far left hand side of our scale we've got methyl carbocations, these are the least stable and then we go to primary which are about the same as vinyl and phenyl carbocations, you might or may not see these very often, um, which is then less stable than secondary carbocations about the same as primary allylic or primary benzylic carbocations. And then at the end of the scale, we've got tertiary. So tertiary carbocations are the most stable. And the order of carbocation stability you're probably the most familiar with is you start with methyl and then less stable than primary, secondary, and tertiary. So the key thing to remember about carbocations is, well, they're unstable. Um, they have less than a full valence shell of electrons so they have six electrons they are unstable species they're very electron poor and even a, a fairly stable carbocation like a tertiary carbocation is still an unstable species it will react with anything which has a pair of electrons which could combine with it and particularly unstable carbocations. So we're going to say secondary carbocations and anything less stable than that. Uh, these can rearrange. They can rearrange through a very, actually when you draw it out, it's actually not a complicated process by which this occurs, but they can rearrange to give a more stable carbocation. And there's two types of rearrangements you can have hydride shifts. You can also have alkyl shifts. So you're going to go from a less stable carbocation to a more stable carbocation. So I'm going to draw out an example to sort of show you what I mean here. Now imagine that we've got this carbocation and we've got a hydrogen here and a positive charge here and let's say we have a hydrogen. Now let's just ask the question first and that's always a good question to ask is what kind of carbocation do we have here? Well this carbocation is attached to two carbons so it's a secondary carbocation. And then we ask the question okay well what are its neighbors? Its neighbors well next door there is a primary carbon that has attached to one carbon and there is also a tertiary carbon which is attached to Two, uh, total of three carbons and a hydrogen. Okay, and thinking about our carbocation stability, the rule is if we have a secondary carbocation which is adjacent to something which could become a more stable carbocation, then the rearrangement could take place. Now if we were going to form a carbocation from this position, this would be a tertiary carbocation and therefore a rearrangement is extremely likely in this case. And, and let's just review exactly Maybe I'm getting too far ahead of us here. Just to review exactly what happens in a rearrangement reaction. So in a rearrangement reaction, what's going to happen is this pair of electrons that is forming the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. So let's draw this, these electrons out. Let's just draw them out in pink here. And here is our hydrogen. This pair of electrons is going to move, and actually maybe we should number the carbons too. This is not IUPAC numbering, this is just keeping track of everything numbering. And the pair of electrons, the tail is going to go from between the carbon-hydrogen bond, and it's going to go to carbon 2. So what we're going to do in this arrow here is we are going to break C3 to H and we're going to form C2 to H. Now what does this really look like when this reaction occurs? Well I kind of compare it to a relay race when you have one runner holding the baton and another runner they just they meet and there's this moment in time when they pass the baton 
where they both kind of have a handle on on they both have the hands on the baton at the same time that's what the intermediate not the intermediate this is what the transition state of this reaction looks like it's important not to call it an intermediate this is the transition state for this reaction where we're slowly going to break the carbon 3 to hydrogen bond and we're slowly going to form the carbon 2 to hydrogen bond and the transition state so I'll label this TS looks like this and then as the reaction progresses we're going to form a bond between carbon 2 and hydrogen we're going to break this bond between carbon 3 to hydrogen and this is going to be our product where we now have a carbocation on carbon what we called carbon 3 so 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 and the green hydrogen has moved and we still have we actually had a black hydrogen on carbon 2 and now this is a tertiary carbocation and we started with secondary and we've gone to tertiary so the driving force if you will for this rearrangement the driving force is more stable carbocation exclamation point okay and like I said there's just one arrow uh, you know call this arrow a in arrow a we are forming carbon 2 to H and we're breaking carbon 3 to H okay and this is called a hydride shift or is sometimes called a 1 2 hydride shift or even more obscurely called a Wagner Mirvine shift so this is the first type of shift which can occur which can lead to a more stable carbocation now there's a second type of rearrangement which can occur and these are called alkyl shifts so I'm gonna just change one thing to all well, two things so instead of having a hydrogen here imagine we had a CH3 we had a CH3 so CH3 which has four carbons this carbon 3 now has four carbons attached to it this is what we call a quaternary carbon this is quaternary because it has four and again if we had a carbocation on carbon 2 uh, if we were to move uh, next door we have a primary carbon if we were to move a pri uh, hydrogen from the primary carbon we would end up with a methyl uh, sorry with a primary carbocation which would be of course less stable than secondary but if we were to move an alkyl group from our quaternary carbon we would end up with a tertiary carbocation which would be more stable than our secondary carbocation so this is another situation under which a carbocation can rearrange and so let me draw this out here to reflect this change so again kind of like the the runners passing the baton you can imagine this moment in time where the CH3 is being swapped between carbon 2 and carbon 3 we are forming carbon 2 to CH3 and we are breaking carbon 2 to CH3 or sorry we're forming C2 to CH3 we're breaking C3 to CH3 and this gives us uh, our final product here again a tertiary carbocation so again the driving force we've gone from secondary to tertiary so we've ended up with a more stable carbocation at the end of this the end of this process so just a really basic overview of the two important types of rearrangement reactions that you'll observe and the driving force like I said is always going to be from less stable to give a more stable carbocation. We can illustrate this with some more examples in future videos.